So if you saw the clip at the beginning of this video, you'll see that there was quite a big storm that rolled through. Now this video is being shot a little differently because I've been over at the neighbor's house helping them out. They had quite a bit of damage to their property, so I've been helping them clean it up. So I won't be showing this whole process of replacing all of these components, but I will show some of the key items and things to look out for. Now you can see here, I've already replaced this line and it's actually got a new style of clamp to hold it in place. This is the old original style with the original line on it. All right, so you can see here the original seal with the original injector and this retaining clip. I've got that removed. Next, what I'm going to do is I will remove the original seal from this injector. All right, so I've got this seal cut. I'll go ahead and remove it. And you can see on this injector that there's a little channel up here. And on this new seal, and right here there's a small 1.5 millimeter retaining Allen. Once the injector is slid into the sleeve, that Allen will sit inside of the surface and prevent it from shooting up and out once the car is running. All right, so I was able to clean up my injector. I've got it into the sleeve. I've got my 1.5 millimeter Allen tightened down, so that'll hold it into this collar. Next, I'll go ahead and get it installed into the car and get it tightened down. Now, something to keep in mind when you're replacing these fuel lines is these ends may need to be slightly adjusted to make it fit nice and flush. You don't wanna have any kinks in your fuel line. All right, so you can see here, we've got all of our new fuel lines installed. One note that I do wanna make about this particular injector, the injector right here at the front. This is the one closest to the firewall on the driver's side. You want to make sure that you have plenty of patience when you're doing this injector seal replacement. It's difficult to get to without doing any disassembly. I'm going to give you a couple tips as to how I was able to get it done. The way that I was able to get it out was using these two hooks and this set of needle nose pliers. It takes quite a bit of patience. I was able to lay down the seal, hold it in place with one hook, bring the fuel line over, and then using my fingers I was able to get the bolt with the upper seal down onto the top of the injector. This took me about an hour to get done because it's just a lot of patience. I dropped the seal a couple of times. I don't have the steadiest hand. So if you have someone with steady hands or even someone with smaller hands, one of your kids if they wanna get involved, that particular injector is the most difficult one to do on this car. Now you can see here, I've actually gone ahead and already removed the fuel pump and the ballast that sits down in the bottom of the tank. We have an updated fuel pump with an updated harness that I'm getting ready to install, and I'll go over that here in a minute. But I just wanted to show these components. You can definitely see that there's a lot of age on this rubber. It started to crack and corrode, and it's definitely a good idea on cars this old to rebuild the majority of your fuel system if you're not replacing all of it. Now you can see here we've got an updated fuel pump assembly. We've got new style clamps to hold it in place. And the reason why we had to remove the old baffle from the tank is because this wouldn't fit inside of it. This is a more modern design for a fuel pump. So hopefully it will work a lot better and be more reliable for the future. Now you can see here we've got the updated fuel pump that I'll be installing. I've got a little bit of work to do with the wiring harness to make it adapt to the vehicle. This kit comes from DeLorean Industries. One of the other things you can get is you can get these crimping tools for doing the weather packs to make sure that the seals are installed correctly. Make sure you don't have any corrosion getting into it. Now we've got all of our fuel lines replaced at the engine compartment. So we'll move to the front of the vehicle where we've got a couple more fuel lines to replace to make them compatible with this new fuel pump, update this wiring harness, and get this new pump installed. Now looking down here at the bottom of this fuel tank, you can see a little bit of debris built up down at the bottom. Nothing too terrible. I'm not seeing any major signs of rust. 
there's a little stud down here at the bottom of the tank that my flashlight's on right now and that was what originally held the ballast in place it's just a 10 millimeter nut and a washer you remove that and you can remove it through the top of this tank so i'll be going through i'll be cleaning out this fuel tank getting all the debris out of the bottom of it but just wanted to show that overall this fuel tank's in pretty good condition not any major signs of rust just a little bit of debris to remove all right now in the last video you saw that I had gone through, I had replaced this assembly for the speedometer cable, but what was missing was this bracket to hold the speedometer cable in place. That just keeps some of the tension off of this joint right here, so it doesn't flex quite as much, and hopefully prevent some premature failure. So we got that in and we got that installed. The other thing I have to do is I have to bleed this brake caliper again. So I'll go through and I'll do all four one more time. I bled them once already when I did the master cylinder. Since I'm just one person doing this brake bleeding, I needed a pressure reservoir and this Mighty Vac model MV7102. This is really great. This can do both pressure and vacuum. So I can also use this to drain the fuel tank. So what I did was I just removed this end and then I can suction the fuel out. Now it does take a little while since I have to empty this reservoir every time it gets full, but it works really well for everything that I need it to. Now it comes with this kit with a bunch of adapters for different brake fluid reservoirs. And this has worked out really well for me so far. I've only had to bleed the brakes on two different cars, but so far it's worked every time. So I'm not sponsored by Mighty Vac or anything. I just wanted to show you all what I use to bleed my brakes. Thank you for watching. I will see you in the next one.